Hello, welcome to My Job Hazard Analysis, where James Routon and I have been researching and discussing various ideas for the improvement of the safety process. My name is Nathan Crutchfield, and today I'd like to talk about the insights we've recently gleaned or learned from the concepts of human performance improvement and how we think these need to be considered for use in the job hazard analysis process. To begin, let's review the benefits of the job hazard analysis. First, the job hazard analysis assists in the management of the hazards and risks that are embedded in each job, its various steps and subtasks. Second, the job hazard analysis uncovers issues that are built into the job. We must begin by asking, is this a task we should avoid, modify extensively, or redesign? Actually, this is a question you should keep in mind as you continually move through the analysis of any type of a job. Third, the job hazard analysis identifies opportunities for improvements in the occupational health and safety management system. We believe that the job hazard analysis should be at the core of your occupational health and safety system as it drives all of the analysis of risk and hazards. And finally, the job hazard analysis provides the foundation for a risk-based analysis of the workplace. James Routon and I believe that both, both hazards and their associated risks should be identified. However, the intent of your process should be to shift the JHA from being directed toward loss reduction efforts and move it into a position of combining loss reduction as well as risk, re risk reduction. The American Society of Safety Engineers held a conference in late 2010 on rethinking safety. A number of the speakers discussed the role of human performance improvement, which drove some of our research and look, in looking for new insights on safety improvement. One item that came out uh, was the 80-20 split that traditionally many safety professionals, as well as James and I have used, in describing what goes on in the workplace. This is the 80% of any kind of loss producing incident is due to human error and 20% is due to physical equipment failure. What our recent readings have shown is that we need to drill down further into this 80-20 split. We now see that 70% of human error is due to organizational weakness and that only 30% is due to individual mistakes. Now, what does this infer? If 80% of loss producing incidents or events are due to human error and 20% are due to equipment failure, then we can uh, take the next step and further see that 70% of that 80% is due to organizational weakness. From this, we see only 24% of loss producing incidents are due to the individual's mistakes and 56%, 56% of all loss producing events are due to latent built-in errors from organizational weakness. Over one half of human error is not from the errors made by the employee touching the equipment or performing the task, but were essentially designed directly into the job itself. What this tells us is that the job hazard analysis process must consider the potential for latent errors previously or already built into the job's design. As humans are fallible, we do make mistakes, we cannot assume that a job was initially perfectly designed for maximum efficiency or effectiveness. In fact, it may be being completed based on a long-term tradition of movements and actions handed down from generation to generation that are actually loss-producing traps for the employee if various elements come together at some future point in time. A major goal of the JHA process should be aimed at uncovering these hidden issues and go beyond merely the acceptance of the, jo of the job as you see it before you. So what are latent errors? These are hidden organizational related weaknesses or equipment flaws that may have lain dormant and gone unnoticed as they have no immediate outcome or negative impact. Latent errors can go for long periods of time before they create a loss producing situation. These latent errors include various management, supervisory, engineering, and administrative actions, directives, or decisions that have the potential for creating the preconditions for error or that fail to prevent, catch, or mitigate the effects of an error. 
Before beginning a job hazard analysis, consider doing the following or asking the following questions. Can any latent errors be identified that are built into the job design? These may be in the form of task demands, individual capacities, the work environment itself, and various aspects of just basic human nature. We can then ask what needs to be avoided, redesigned, modified to reduce the hazards and the scope of risk. This is even before we start the analysis and review of the various controls we might need to have in place. Finally, we may want to ask, is this job being completed within the range of other jobs being completed by other employees that have hazards and risk that can overlap and create a synergy effect that makes the completion of any of these jobs uh, have a higher risk or higher hazard. Take a hard look at your job hazard analysis methods and process. Have you considered aspects of human performance beyond just body mechanics and basic ergonomics? We believe that the JHA is foundational to your safety management system and that by adapting human performance improvement concepts into your JHA efforts, you may be able to produce additional insights on the scope of risk, hazards, and develop improved controls. Finally, a closing reminder directly out of the uh, DOE handbook, people cannot perform better than the organization that is supporting them. The materials used for this presentation were adapted from the U.S. Department of Energy's Human Performance Improvement Handbook, produced in 2009, and Job Hazard Analysis, a Guide for Voluntary Compliance and Beyond by James Routon and Nathan Crutchfield, published by Butterworth Heinemann in 2008. This is Nathan Crutchfield, and we look forward to having additional discussions with you with regards to improving the job hazard analysis process. Thanks again.